What's up guys, this is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. In this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at kerning and letter spacing here in Adobe Illustrator. First, I'm gonna show you both ways to kind of adjust those values, which is basically the spacing between letters in your text. And uh, then I'll talk about why you might use one or the other or some instances and maybe some extra tidbits at the end. But let's get into it. So I did another tutorial that was like a logo tutorial, but it dealt with shapes and it dealt with more of the theory behind kerning, like looking at the volume of space between letters. In this one, I'm gonna show you if you have live text, how to adjust the letter spacing. So you have two options in your character window. If you're updated, you're gonna see the character window over here on the right in your properties panel if uh, you have a text box selected. If you aren't updated, just go to window, down to text, or type, find type down here, and then open up character, that's command T as a shortcut. You can take this little window and dock it in your toolbar somewhere, and then it's the little A symbol. And once you have that popped out, there's two attributes at the bottom here. One of them is to set the kerning between two characters and the other one is to set the tracking for selected characters. So a lot of times kerning uh, has to do with just two characters. So if you're looking at the L and the E, you're, you're adjusting the spacing in between. And then tracking or letter spacing is generally referred to as across the board, like all the characters in your uh, text box here. So let's just look at how to adjust those. If we grab this text box and we set the letter spacing or tracking to something like 50, notice how all of our letters are now spaced out even further. And to show you that, let's go up to 100. And now you can see just how much space there is in between each and every letter in our text box. That is tracking. That adjusts the spacing for either the entire text box or a selected set of text. So if you just have uh, a certain bit of your text that you want to adjust, like if I select this piece here, I can just make that piece like 100. And now just that part is spaced out more than other parts. So that's how you can sort of adjust the spacing. Another quick shortcut is if you have this selected, you can hold Option or Alt and press the right and left arrow keys, and that's gonna jump it 20. If you're looking at the character window over here, you'll notice that it changes in value by 20 every time you do that. Another quick tidbit, you can adjust the line spacing by pressing up and down. But that's for another tutorial. All right, so that is tracking. That's how to adjust the letter spacing um, for basically a lot of letters. But what about kerning? What about this whole like adjusting in between letters? So one thing I use a lot in ads is learn more, like a little learn more button. And when this guy is scaled down, because a lot of times they're small, in, in this particular font, like every font's gonna be different, but in this particular font, when I start to track that out by like 20, uh, we'll see where that, that lands it. Yeah, so even just at 20, you'll notice, and I know this is small, but um, the E and the A are still super close to each other. Some of the other letters are more spaced out, but when you look at this, they're not spaced out completely evenly. So if I just highlight the space in between the E and the A and go down here, I can actually kern or set the amount of spacing in between just those two letters. So if I hold shift and press the up arrow key, it's gonna adjust by 10, uh, increments of 10, I should say. And if I just keep pressing that, I can sort of bump that letter over and you'll notice that all the letters are moving, but in particular, we're adjusting the space between the E and the A. Now, if I were to scale that back up, we can see how that's adjusted even more and it's a little bit too much now at this size. So I would back that off a little bit just by holding shift and pressing the down arrow key and just dropping that down by like 10 points or pixels, whichever my value is set at. So that's how you can kern uh, the spacing in between individual letters. So like uh, just two letters if you need to kind of spot kern. And then if you wanna adjust uh, most all the letters or just a selection, I would use your tracking options over here. Also the same thing works when I have uh, the space selected between two letters, I can hold option and press left and right and it's gonna bump that in increments of 20. So you can, you don't have to open up your character panel, you can just look in here and be like, oh, the space between the R and E needs to be bumped out a little bit. Hold option or alt, press right, and then you you can just sort of kern that uh, as quickly as, as, as that. Okay, so that was probably way more long-winded than I wanted that part to be, but uh, basically, a lot of times when I get a font, so this font here, if I go back to zero, I pretty much always feel like it's too close together. 
So I almost always take this at least to 10, maybe even 20, almost by default. It just helps add a little bit of space in your body copy. I always like doing that, sometimes even more. It all depends on the font. Now let's say this learn more was a header. When you're kerning individually, you really don't want to sit there and kern every time an E and a D or a D and an I show up, you got to go through and kern those. That's why we sort of track it and we kind of do one mass kern to everything. And then, uh, then the, the, you know, the body copy looks pretty much okay. There might be a little spot here and there depending on how, how well built your font is. But when it comes to headers, that's where, you know, it's a little bit easier to spot kern, the spacing in between certain letters. So if I wanted this to be bumped out a little bit, remember option or alt, I can uh, hit the right arrow key and, and can kind of just spot kern some of these. If I want some of them kerned to be specific values and others not, you know, if I want to bring that O a little bit closer to the R, uh, maybe not to the R, maybe just to the M there, uh, just kind of adjusting the spacing in between individual letters. So you can still have an overall tracking after that, but then each of the current, you notice how this doesn't have a certain value in it. That's because each of these spaces in between all of these letters are different now. So that's how you can kern and adjust the text, uh, both body copy and headers. A lot of times I save my little spot kerning for headers or big words that I want to look perfect. Or, you know, when I'm creating banner ads, I gotta get, you know, you're, you're dealing with such small pixels that you really want it to be red. So learn more is a button that, you know, shows up a lot at like this size. And I'm like, oh, you know, that R and that N are way too close to each other. I need to adjust the spacing individually between these letters. Um, also, uh, you know, if you're a real design nut, you are maybe particular about using the word kerning for a certain thing and using the word tracking for a certain thing. Um, at the end of the day, kerning, tracking, letter spacing, don't worry about it. If you're new to this, as long as you can communicate what you mean, you're going to be all right. So don't worry about, you know, what the terminology is that you're using. Just know that that's what those things mean. They talk about the spacing between letters. Um, I, I'm sorry. I just saw this said no nummy. That's hilarious. Okay, guys, that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, I hope you guys, I hope I covered enough. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Subscribe for more tips and tutorials and creative videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.